establish sound and equitable sentencing policies and practices for the fe for the federal courts, um, to advise and assist Congress on the development of effective and efficient <coughs> crime policy, and to collect and analyze research and distribute a, a broad array of um, information on federal crimes. I would encourage you all, there's the website www.ussc.gov, and I know that Ovid's going to send around this presentation, but it'll be a Macedonian, but it'll be very interesting for you to just to go onto the website. Um, your commission is going to establish a, a similar um, website, but it's got all, a lot of information. Um, one thing, and we, and we gave this uh, advice to the Sentencing Commission um, here in Macedonia. The, the U.S. Sentencing Commission is very much com committed to public access and transparency. So there's a lot of information that's on the website that all the citizens have access to. Um, there are a lot of public hearings um, and meetings where the public can actually go to. And that is very important for Macedonia. And we've commented that the whole process where this new sentencing law got enacted there wasn't a lot of citizen debate on that law. Um, and this is true for a lot of the laws in Macedonia. It's really unfortunate that, that there's not enough citizen comment because the citizens really should be involved, especially with sentencing policy, because sentencing really affects all the citizens. So we are encouraging the commission to be as transparent and as open as possible and to invite citizens. So this is um, what we told them. Um, the commission, and you'll see this, it's, a, it's, it's pretty amazing. on. On the website, they post a ton of data, reports, information. Um, they have a Twitter account. Um, so they're constantly giving information to the public. Um, leader on sentencing policy. So again, the, 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 uh, the commission works very closely with Congress to provide data and support ch um, basically justification for changes. This was an interesting point. One of the things that we've heard, we've met with a variety of people, um, in the, and I'll talk a little bit more about this. Right now, the sentencing guidelines are advisory. So they have guidelines which are basically that the judges start with. Um, so, and then the judge can devi deviate up or down if he, has a good, if he or she has a good reason. So if uh, the, the sentencing commission is analyzing all of this um, data, and if it sees that most of the judges are are um, are sentencing below the suggested guidelines or above the suggested guidelines, then that's a reason that maybe those guidelines are either too harsh or not harsh enough. So they use this data to um, to recommend changes. So the the sentencing commission, and this is uh, one of the things that we talk to the Mass Hearing Sentencing Commission. It's really a data driven entity evidence-based entities, so it needs data. It can't just, you know, in the air decide what to do. It needs this data. Um, only Congress can change the criminal codes, um, and, the, and, the, and the commission's changes are subject to Congress disapproval. And again, what that means is, is the commission recommends changes, um, and as long as Parliament doesn't say no, those changes to the, com those changes to the guidelines become law. And that is similarly how your guidelines, in fact, your guidelines are, are modeled, your law is modeled on the U.S. system. Um, one thing that's interesting, uh, what's happening in the U.S. now is on drug offenses. Uh, it, in, the, in the 70s and 80s, especially the 80s when Ronald Reagan was president, um, there was a lot of violent crime and there was a huge movement to have very harsh drug sentences and it was crazy. Like if you had, we had this law called uh, three strikes, it was basically a three strikes law. So if you were guilty of three felonies, you would end up in jail for the rest of your life. But they would be pretty, it could be pretty minor, like basically possession of cocaine. So three offenses of possession of cocaine and you would end up in jail for the rest of your life. So. Um, this was, it was very, and that's led to our huge incarceration rate. Um, in 2014, there was a reduction in sentences for more than 60% of federal inmates. And that's where the, the, basically the guidelines said one thing, and the commission worked to reduce um, the severity of drug sentences. Um, 
So talking a little bit more about how the commission is organized, and again, this is something that we talk to your commission about, because they literally just pick the people. They don't have, they don't have a website, they don't have any internal rules yet, but basically, they need an internal operating document, so in, the U.S. Sentencing Commission has detailed rules of practice and procedure, basically, you know, how, um, you know, how you select members, um, how the meetings are, are, you know, how many meetings occur, how does the public gain access, procedures for public comment, amendment process. So right now, it's basically the internal document for the commission, that, for the U.S. Sentencing Commission. And the Macedonian Sentencing Commission is going to work on this. Um, one other thing that's very important is that the Sentencing Commission plays a very important role on training. And you'll see if you go to the website, they have a whole bunch of materials online, like videos. But the Sentencing Commission goes around the country and trains judges, prosecutors, and attorneys. Now here, no one's really figured it out yet, <laughs> because we basically supported training of judges and prosecutors um, the last six months or so, and we're possibly, we're probably gonna support training of attorneys, but the question is, is your judicial academy gonna be the one who's gonna support training on sentencing, or is the commission gonna be the one? Um, and, and really, the, the problem is the commission, the academy only deals with training for judges and prosecutors, but the attorneys need to be trained as well. So every, and think about it, every year you could have changes to the guidelines, so someone's gotta be training people on the changes to the guidelines. Um, 